to New York Talk, episode 146. I'm Elise DeLucci. We're here in my living room. How you doing? I'm sitting in my living room that's almost finished. You know, I had the little glow up. I decided to take Barbie core, Barbie soft core, to a whole new level. I had, I told you, dark blue walls and, and a dark blue couch and leopard wall-to-wall carpeting. And it was stunning. You know, gold accents, of course. Um... Very sumptuous, very stunning, but I decided I'm going to lighten up my life a little bit. The cream walls, I did a purple velvet couch, a pink velvet accent chair, piped in purple velvet to match the couch. It's stunning! That's all I'm going to say. Here's the issue, which I didn't even get to fact of the day. The issue is, is that I did, I have picture frame moldings on my wall that I have painted gold leaf, because of course I did. And... I want to put a removable wallpaper just inside the picture frame molding. And I it's it's a lot of square footage of wall for some reason. I don't know. It winds up being like 200 square feet. And if you live in a center hall colonial, like in a cul-de-sac, maybe you're hearing this and being like, this is nothing, Elise. But it, apparently, to me, hearing I have 200 square feet of wall space to cover with removable paper is a lot. So I'm on wallshop.com, shop, two P's and an A, wallshop, like spelled the British way. And I find this beautiful paper, thick stripes, cream, and like a, a pale pink, almost a coral-ish, ish, coral-ish. It's called slipper, but it's not, I don't know. I don't know how much of a slipper. Actually, maybe it's like a ballet slipper. Anyway, Sarah Jessica Parker makes it. It's like $200 a roll. I need, I think, five rolls. It, I called Priscilla. She's a math teacher. I said, Priscilla, tell me how many rolls I need. Here's the roll dimensions. Here's my square footage. Here's the wall dimension. She's like, you need like four and a half, five rolls. I don't want to spend $1,000 on removable paper. A thousand plus with tack. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what if it doesn't look good? I don't know. That's a lot of money, you know? I thought, rem- I thought oh, I'm going to do removable wallpaper. It's going to be like $2 a roll. I thought, I'm thinking like contact paper, you know? Remember contact paper? Anyway, mm. fact of the day. Did you know that Frank Sinatra was behind closed doors? Very philanthropical. He spent about a billion dollars donating to charities behind the scenes. Is that not amazing? And I'm going to tell you how I know this. Because TV talk, I watch a ton of shows. And, you know, of course, I had to mentally prepare for the girls being back in school. I just needed to shut off the mind, sit down, watch shows. One of the shows that I watch, you got to watch it. You're going to love it. It's, hold on, it's called, it's on Amazon Prime. I have it written down. It's called Sinatra in Palm Springs. And it's a documentary about people that worked in restaurants and the bartenders and his his wife is in it and even though she had since passed but it, it's all about what he did for the Palm Springs community how he lived his house the places he went to um why Palm Springs you know as versus in LA or Vegas and that kind of thing and I love Sinatra I feel like we all do you know him in the gold microphone I mean he's the boss right Although if you ask Paulie the truth, he'll tell you he hates him. I mean, really, Paul? Really, you hate Sinatra? Let me tell you something, okay? I have a memory of driving with the tooth up to, I think it was Harvest Moon Farms in upstate, upstate, you know, to it's like the Catskills. It's probably like Westchester County. <laughs> but we were driving to go apple picking and pumpkin picking with friends of ours years ago. And, you know, it was one of these days, family day, Saturday, Sunday, you know, early, 9 o'clock in the morning, we pile into the car, kids are babies, we're driving, you know, air is crisp, I probably had a Duncan, and I put on music, and it was Sinatra. And I did that because growing up, I always heard my mom and my dad listen to Sinatra and Tony Bennett and Linda Ronstadt, and just every, you know, every, they listen to music. So put the music on, and we start driving. And uh, I don't know what the hell was his problem, but he says out of nowhere, turn this off. I I don't like this. He's a horrible singer. I don't know why all you people love him. He's, you know, mobbed up and this and that, and he did the wrong thing. And it's just like, (sighs) 
we had a huge fight. Like, when I say a huge fight, we had, like, a huge effing fight. Like, I was probably, like, pull over the car. But, and I make him sometimes seem to be a horror. And he's not. He's not. It, he was in a mood. But I think part of the problem in my marriage with him was that, obviously, I'm Italian. And I'm from New York, as you know. And we're a very particular breed. And for whatever reason, sometimes when you're in your element, you know, maybe you got the music on or you're with the old friends or maybe you're at, a, you know, a party, whatever. You know, you maybe you start reminiscing. Maybe this stuff comes back. Hello, it's life. It's life. And he, I don't know. I don't know if he felt threatened by it. I don't know if he didn't like it. I don't know if, 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 if that... Um, the, that time of me listening to music, if it conjured up some sort of, I don't know, you know, like uh, big shot energy, you know, like who the fuck knows? And, but he, 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 we had a huge fight and I swear to God, I feel like I'm never going to forget that until I die because, because I had tumult in my upbringing, like all of us. And for whatever reason, listening to those songs and the words of those songs, it just puts me back in a happy place. When I was young, living in my semi-attached house in Staten Island with the Monte Carlo parked outside of my father's tractor trailer truck, you know, and, and the family parties and the holidays. And it made me just feel so awful. And I resent him for that. I do. Because for some reason, and I allow it. I allowed it then, and I allow it still, is that I let his nasty mouth dampen my memories, and I shouldn't, and whatever. Moving on. I love Frank Sinatra, and I just love him. And by the way, on the mobbed up stuff, I don't know details about this specifically. They did talk about it in the movie. <laughs> very vaguely they didn't use the word mob or mafia or anything like that it was just you know like i don't know some like vinnie boom bots that ran vegas or something but i didn't say this to the tooth then because you know who cares back in the day in the 50s and the 60s by the way elmo elmo what are you doing i need that amazon bag to do returns oh god um back in the day there were some organizations let's just say that ran some of the clubs, and they ran Las Vegas, and they ran restaurants, and maybe they wanted, I don't know, an entertainer, an Italian entertainer, or Jewish, whatever they wanted in there, you know, and and it's like the equivalent of um, a boss at work. You got to kiss the ring. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and glorify any of that, because it's horrible. It's a horror, you know. My father had a all-cash business. God knows what he was doing, right? Well, he was really like a wannabe that really never was probably wanted. I mean, that's terrible. But, you know, he wasn't, I I was, I did not talk about the nasty things in the book, okay? That's all I'm going to say. But you got to play the game, you know? If you go into work, right, and you have a boss, and he owns the, the, the store that you work in, you know, you might bring him a coffee, you might kiss the ring, you might ask him how the families are, you might go to his house for a holiday barbecue, you know what I'm saying? And maybe that was the relationship that Frank had with these guys. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and you know, the other one, Rickles, I think Rickles too had that same relationship. You know what? I personally turn a blind eye to all of that. Meaning... We know history. We know the horrors of history. But I think that Frank was a, a, a nice guy from Hoboken, born to nice parents. Or I, this is what I like to believe. Nice guy, born to nice parents, didn't have a lot of money, worked his way up, worked his ass off, worked his ass off, and, and, uh, and did what he had to do. That's what I want to say. Anyway, the movie, uh, Sinatra and Palm Springs, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. You're going to love it. It's like taking a trip back in time. You're going to love it. And, and let me tell you something. If you haven't been to Palm Springs, you got to go. You got to go. I went to Palm Springs uh, a few times because there was a conference that I used to go to. Uh, it was called, what was it called? Some media tech tech digital thing I used to go 
and uh, I ran the Palm Springs 5K one time when I was there. And I can't remember the hotel I was at, but, you know, in a conference, I didn't really leave the hotel a lot, um, you know, because I was busy in the day and the night. But a couple of times we went out at night and, you know, had dinners and we were uh, drinking. And it's just like taking a step back in time. Everything is, you know, mid-century. Uh, the architecture is really cool. And, you know, it's a desert. It's a desert. Palm Springs, Palm Desert. It's definitely worth going. If you don't like the ocean, uh, if you like, if you I mean, if you love the ocean, then, you know, you might be SOL. But I think it's worth going uh, for, for the nostalgia. Anyway, it also talked about in the documentary, you know, uh, he died. He ends up moving to L.A., Sinatra for his death. You know what I found out? I should have made this the fact of the day. When he died, he was buried with uh, a Zippo lighter, uh, what I have it here, oh, a bottle of Jack Daniels, that was his drink, and a roll of the 10 dimes. And I thought, oh, that's so weird, why 10 dimes? And because you remember back, I think it was like in the 80s, his son was kidnapped, and the, the, the people, they wanted a ransom. And they said to Frank, uh, we're only gonna negotiate the ransom on the payphone. <laughs> And at the time, you needed to put the dimes to keep the phone running, you know? And uh, and this is before my time, because I remember pay phones were 25 cents. I don't remember when they were 10 cents. And he was so horrified and upset and shaken up. You know, PTSD. He he never wanted to be without a roll of dimes, like, you know, to save his son. And anyway, one of the things they talk about in the documentary is uh, just how much charitable work. One of the things I love, I love, and I, I wish... I, I pray to God that I come into riches, um, real riches, and I get to do something similar because I will and I would. He, he would pick up the local newspaper, like the Palm Springs Times, whatever the hell it's called, and he would read about an article about uh, maybe, you know, someone that had a car accident uh, or somebody that had a fire in their house and they lost everything. And he anonymously donated and took care of their medical bills or, or built them a house, all anonymous. And all these people were on the documentary talking about it. And that's something that you just never hear. And I love that. I love it. Anyway, and if you want, let me end this Sinatra love fest on a laughing note. If you want to laugh, there's, you might know this story. So, uh, him and Don Rickles are really good friends, right? And I love it. my favorite comic in the whole entire world besides Joan, Don Rickles. I love Don Rickles. I I I cry just when I see him on TV, his bits, his everything. His daughter, Mindy Rickles, is around. I think she lives in LA, but she sometimes comes to Chris's club and and does stuff uh funny, but different than the father. But I love, love Don. So anyway, Don and Frank are friends. And one night John was at uh, a restaurant and he was going to have a date. And he says to Frank, he sees Frank in the restaurant and he says to Frank, Frank, uh, um, I'm sitting over here. You know, he goes over to Frank. I'm sitting over here with the, this date and it, she loves you. And it would mean the world to me so if I could really impress this girl I'm with. At some point during our dinner, do you mind coming over and saying hello to me? you know, and, and, and my date. It would really make her night, you know? And Frank's like, sure, sure, anything anything for you, Don, you know? And that's it, you know. So Don's having dinner with the girl, and they're, <laughs> they're ordering. And, and Frank comes over and says, oh, Don, nice to see you here. How you doing? And, and Don Rickles <laughs> looks up from his menu, and he says, Don, what the, hey, Frank, what the hell are you doing? We're trying to order here. And, and 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 Frank died laughing, and it was I don't even know if I'm saying the words exact, but Frank died laughing. You know, and it was a whole, you know, it was a whole thing. And and the other thing that you should know, I swear, and I'm then I'm <laughs> finished. YouTube, I probably told you before. YouTube, Johnny Carson, Frank Sinatra, and Don Rickles, and you're gonna watch the best bit ever. It makes me die laughing. This Tony Manganango, and it's so funny. It's just so funny. Anyway, also TV talk. I watch a lot of things. Netflix, Harry and Meghan, I'm late to the party. I finally watched that. Nice couple. You know, I I don't, besides for being married to the tooth, that was as much British as I could take. I, I don't really follow the royal family and all that stuff. All I know is that those two kids, Harry and William, 
was such a catch. And when I went to London, when I was young, I remember standing outside of St. James Palace or St. James Gate, whatever the hell it was. I think St. James Gate is a pub in Manhattan. How gross. <laughs> St. <laughs> James Palace. I remember like standing outside being like saying to the beef eaters, the bodyguards, the, you know, the, the doormen with the furry hats and being like, oh my God, can William come out? I want to see if he wants to take me out on a date, you know, when I was 16. But I watched uh, the Harry and Meghan, really, really great. Um, I still have one episode left. She's something that Meghan, she's something. She's all I'm going to say. She's something. She, she, listen, she worked her way. She worked her way to the top. I'm not saying in the family. I'm not saying that. But she, she, she was an actress. I think that she was on also, I, they didn't say it on the show, but I think she was even on, I think she was on Suits, but they talked about that. But I think that she was like on Deal or No Deal or one of those kind of game shows. And apparently, you know, I don't know, they met on Instagram or something, which by the way, Meghan Markle, what were you doing? You're so cute. What were you doing? You're on TV, actress, and someone tells you a prince wants to talk to you on Instagram, and you're like, okay. I mean, that could have gone very bad, don't you think? <laughs> but I love her, and I, and I I, th I think she's sweet, and uh, her mother's sweet, and th th it was, it's a very nice show if you haven't seen it. And then the other thing I watched on TV Talk, Bruce Jenner. Netflix, uh, Untold. It's just an episode. I think it's a series. I, I think it's old. I think it's like a few years old. And Elmo, no. I think it's a few years old. And it just goes over his story. And what I loved about it is that it talks about, he talks about, she, so, sorry, Caitlin, excuse me. Caitlin talks about her time in the Olympics and how Bruce would have never achieved. Oh, God. You know what? Elmo, mommy's on the phone. Stop it. Mommy's on the phone. Elmo, let me pick you up. You see what, the, you know, people are like, oh, your dog's so cute. Yeah, he's a doll. Come here. Come here. You know what? He wants to play, but I'm, hello, I'm working here. I'm working here, Elmo. Mommy's working. I don't even let me pick him up. I'm going to have to pause this thing. Can you, do you understand people are giving me their precious time to listen to this goddamn podcast and you're over here yapping away? I gotta give this dog a bone. Hold on. It's like we're really on the phone, you know? Elmo. Stop. This is like so not cool. This is, you're doing this a lot. Peek a bone. Let me give you a better bone. That was a terrible bone. Come here. All right, I gave him his bone. Elmo, I threw it on the thing. Oh, he doesn't even see it. Oh, God damn it. Elmo, this is very unprofessional of mommy. Anyway, Caitlin talks about, let me put my earphones back on. Caitlin refers to her former self as Bruce. So uh, I didn't know that that he does that, and that, I thought that was interesting. But the other, but that, but not really. Um, he, Caitlin, saying, well, he Bruce would have never been able to achieve what he achieved in the Olympics if it wasn't for the uh, struggle that he had on the inside. And I understand that uh, coming from some, I mean, not to that magnitude, obviously, but coming from a, someone, a creative person, you know. Sometimes to get certain things to come out, like you really got to go through shit, you know? Anyway, all these shows are worth watching. Untold Bruce Jenner, Megan and Harry, Sinatra and Palm Springs. On a totally separate note, I tried to cut corners. I was dying for lasagna a couple weeks ago, and I decided I don't. I really don't want to make lasagna. I didn't want to order in lasagna because I just thought, Nah, that's kind of nah. And, and so I, I got uh, Instacart from Costco, and... I uh, bought this lasagna, short rib lasagna, Juliana Rana. That's the brand. You probably see that. They think they make like tortellini and gnocchi and those kind of filled shapes. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. It was basically like eating stofas. That's all I'm going to say. 
don't bother buying it. Uh, it well, here's the thing. If you really are dying for lasagna and you, you're in a pinch and you have it in your freezer, fine. But you cannot compare it to homemade um, at all. And I don't, again, I don't know what I was thinking buying frozen short rib lasagna. I wanted plain, but they didn't have it. Anyway. Have you heard about FTX on the crypto note for a sec, Sam Bankman freed with a lunatic? I mean, you know, obviously we don't even talk about crypto anymore. I, it's very depressing. We all know we're in a crypto winter. Is it coming? Is it going? Who the hell knows? This FTX, everybody thought he was the next Warren Buffett and he really wound up just fooling the world. And uh, he's you know, he's he's in jail and he's on trial. And when you're in jail, you don't get certain privileges like beautiful meals, obviously, and you, 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 your Peloton bike. And, you know, he's having peanut butter sandwiches and whatever else they serve jail grub. And this guy, he's a vegetarian. He'll die. All the extorting and stealing of money and 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 and. and boondoggling people and believe, letting people believe him on his uh, investments and his builds with FTX, he turns around and tells his lawyer, I can't think properly or perform properly in the trials and stuff if they're not going to, if the jail can't adhere to my plant-based non, you know, my non-animal diet. Can you imagine? What, what a brat what a brat he said oh no wait he's he's yes yeah. he because wait yeah i have it written down. The, the the lawyer still died the lawyer says my client continues to be served a flesh diet which he doesn't eat and he's only able to survive on the peanut butter bread and water that they give him and he's not able to prepare you know what have a fucking piece of meatloaf from jail and suck it up, okay? I can't even. I literally can't even. Makes me crazy. Can we talk about makeup for a second? I got a new concealer, Tarte Shape Tape. I really should talk about it in my uh, video on Instagram. Uh, it's amazing. Can I just say amazing? It's been around forever. Tarte shape tape it comes in 35 colors so i couldn't order it online i went into i think i got it in ulta and i had them match me it it just it's it's thick but not like annoying thick you know it's thick it covers dark circles broken capillaries a blemish okay it's it it's the most natural looking concealer i've come across in a long time and this comes, and before that I was using Makeup Forever. Before this I was using Makeup Forever. And I still use Makeup Forever. I have that back up in like my, my pocketbook. Uh, but I bought other ones also recently. Like a MAC concealer. I think it's called like MAC 24. It's nice, but it was thin. It's thin. And so, one, I felt like it's, it's not for my kind of skin. Uh, I felt like it had a shine to it, and I felt like the concealer was see-through. I don't need to, the whole point of concealer is to conceal. Thank you, God. Anyway, Tarte Shape Tape. It's like I don't even know. I I could if it was ninety dollars, I'm buying it. Like I don't care. Uh, I think though it was like twenty-five, and it's worth every damn penny. Like that's all I could say. And and uh, well, I always have what to say. Some people say, FYI, it's a little too matte for their liking. I have combination skin, but I tend to get oily as the day goes by, especially in the summer. You know, I'm like a beast. I don't care. I will, matte is good because as the day goes by, the matte stays, and then I could just, you know, powder it up. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Um... Someone told me about, someone wrote to me, hold on, I have it right there. They said, for mature skin, they love this powder. It's, um, it's called Say, S, I think S-A-I-E, Say Air Set Radiant Loose Powder and Translucent. They love it for a setting powder for mature skin. 
I turn 40 in a couple of weeks. I don't know if that constitutes as mature skin. However, <laughs> I read the reviews on the Say Air Set Powder and it says, oh, it's amazing. It's great, perfect, but one little problem. It's hard to get out of the packaging. Okay. You know what mature people don't want? They don't want to have to fuss and fumble with goddamn packaging. So based on that review alone, I am not buying it. That's all I could offer you on that. But I did talk about the other day uh, the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I love that. If you're looking for a setting powder, that's amazing. And also, Charlotte Tilbury has a setting powder that's incredible that I'm loving right now. Mm. What I love about the Charlotte Tilbury powder is it's a compact. I like a compact. What I don't like about the Charlotte Tilbury powder is it doesn't come with a puff, a puff or a thing, an applicator. So you have to get a separate brush, which what a freaking pain in the ass is that if you're out, you know? Anyway. Did you know that black chokers were the symbol of prostitution back in the day, in the 1800s? I know. Me neither. Could you die? Like, I love chokers and I think that they're they're back in style or they're coming back I don't really care I've always worn them you know who else loves a good choker Barbara you know Streisand if you ever look at any of her concerts she's always wearing something fabulous you know Donna Karen does her clothes like like personally it's not like she goes to the store and and she always has on some beautiful choker usually like a Victorian style a velvet a lace I love the look I love it. I don't show a lot of skin. Like, I don't show... I'm not a girl that shows a lot of cleavage. I don't, like, show a lot of, like, stomach. Why would I show my stomach? It looks like leopards clawed through my stomach if they're having kids. I don't show, like, a lot... I like... I have good legs. I don't... I don't... I like to be covered up. Like, I love a turtleneck. I love things around my neck. I love a turtleneck. I don't like necessarily the way they feel, but I like... Like, you know, I love a turtleneck. I love that look. And I love a choker. I think the neck, it's a very sexy area. And I was so surprised when I was looking for a couple of chokers to buy. Just I wanted just some cheap, cheap ones, like from, you know, the Amazons of the world. And this article pops up and it says in the 1800s, when people, commoners, would wear a red string around their neck, that symbolized... They or this family. Wait, was it family? Wait, was it? Yeah, when commoners wore a red string around their neck, it symbolized that they were they had country that they were countrymen victims of the guillotine. They were beheaded. So the red string around the neck, beheaded in the eighteen hundreds. And if you wore a black string around the neck, you were basically saying to the world, "I'm a effing hooker." Like it, it, <laughs> what? I kind of could see that, though, you know, because there's something very scandalous about it, a choker. Even though it's not that kind of body part, but... And then, you know, there's obviously the whole dominatrix thing, you know, the leather around the neck, but... Who knew? Who knew? But I love chokers. I love them. I I found a couple on Shein, the fast fashion website, and can we talk about that for a second? <sighs> having a dilemma so my daughters you know they're getting older I'm dying inside it is what it is it's a fact of life they're like tweeny ish not yet ish and uh you know they want to be dressed more fashionable and I was just saying this to another mother that I know recently in the neighborhood I buy their stuff at Target and the Gap and the Gap has fabulous sales you know I talk about the Gap all the time and um their friends, one of their fr little friends, had on a jacket, and they said, "Oh, mommy, we love this jacket. You know, can you get it for us?" And I said, "Oh, yeah. Where, you know, where's it from?" And the the mom, or the kid said they got it at Zara. So I go on the Zara website, and I am looking, and the prices are, I mean, you know, like they're not like so cheap. Air quotes for kids' clothes. It's like I don't know, like the jacket's like fifty, sixty dollars. This kid had on like a fake plastic pleather, whatever. That they call PU leather. They call it PU leather because pleather stinks. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say to you. <laughs> but you, she had on this PU leather, polyurethane leather, plastic leather, faux leather, pleather, pleather, plastic leather. You know, plastic leather. 
challenge jacket. It was like 60 bucks. I think that's too much to spend on something that's not functional for kids, aka going to keep them warm, and they're going to grow out of. So anyway, fast forward to fast fashion, and pun not intended, and she and everything's like under $10 for the kids. And it's hit or miss. It's like wash and wear. But not always. Some of the stuff lasts. And I was very upset. Up, like, oh, my God, do they do, like, child slave labor? So I was, like, looking it up, turning the internet inside out. Because if they did, I'm obviously not supporting them. But they do pay their workers very, very low rates. Like, it's not even a rate. It's, like, it's, I don't know, 20 cents an hour. I mean, it's insane, you know? And in this article that I read, it wasn't only Shein. It was, like, the Gap and J. Crew and all these designers that are paying this, you know, cents on the dollar. And, you know, obviously, this is the whole fast fashion issue. But what are you supposed to do? Like, that's what I just want to know. Like, what are you doing? Are you buying your children, you know, five, ten items of clothing a year from at, 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 at a, a, a retail regular expensive rate that is made in the U.S. that you're guaranteeing that they're made in the USA only. I mean, I don't know what, you know, I don't want to like overthink it, but I also don't want to like do the ethically wrong thing. I mean, can you imagine living in a country or in a place where you're like, I don't know if they're chained up to a sewing machine, but if somebody's throwing patterns at you and you're making 20 cents an hour, like sewing a plastic leather tube top, like, uh, really, you know, so anyway, I, I, I'm still, I'm still on the fence about shopping there, I feel really not good about it, but I do feel good when it comes, and when the stuff came, and they're, like, so excited, and they're, like, oh, mommy, this is so cool, oh, my god, I love it, like, because at the end of the day, I'm a single mom, and I'm on one income, and I, want my kids to you know feel have their a couple of cool pieces of clothing right so anyway she and i looked they i saw some chokers on there for like literally 50 cents um but i got the kids some cute stuff i mean i think i got them each like 10 things i said you you can each spend 50 dollars, and we did it like a math thing it picked stuff put it in the, the cart up to 50 dollars each hundred bucks these kids they're so happy and for my 40th you know they want to dress up which is so cute so they ordered dresses from there and I think the dresses I paid 20 or like 22 or something for each dress these are like I mean they didn't come yet but they're like tool sequins you know I don't know I mean more on that I feel like I'm gonna have more to say as time goes on you know but they're, they're, it's like it's I don't want to get myself all crazy about it. I get myself crazy about everything. Anyway, that's that. That was my product of the day. My my product of the day was the taut shape tape. And here's the quote. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you. I'm doing a show for New York Comedy Festival. Um, if you've seen me in the past, you might see some of the same material. It's, uh, but I'm doing an hour. I'm headlining a, a small show at the stand. Again, upstairs. That's where I did a show uh, a couple, a year ago maybe. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's not going to be on a weeknight. Slightly annoying, I know. More on that. I'll talk about it on my Instagram. Quote of the day about Don Rickles. I like him. But then again, I don't have good taste. Frank Sinatra. That quote sums up their friendship. Just busting balls with each other all the time. I just love them. You gotta watch Sinatra and Palm Springs. You're not gonna be disappointed. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm Elise DeLucci. This is New York Talk. Love to love you, baby.